Okay, listen up. We're going to start with some scripture. Listen up, everyone. If we can get all the children out of the children's room. Daniel, go ahead and sit down, buddy. No, sit down. All right, listen up. We're going to start with Numbers 10.10. Numbers 10.10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your ascending smoke offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, Elohim. to get the last one in. <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. All right, so let's, uh, so let's uh, give an offering before the Most High. Stan, if you would, uh, lead us in prayer, and let's have our offering before him. Heavenly Father, we call on you today in the name of Yahusha. Father, praise you. Thank you that you are, have helped us, that you're working, helping us work through these, these trials. Uh, and uh, that you have given us joy, Father, in you. We praise you for Yahusha, for your spirit, that you're helping us, that you're giving us a wonderful time now uh, of fellowship, uh, both uh, with our brothers and sisters and with you. In Yahusha's name, we pray you bless this food. We pray uh, that uh, you would bless the, the worship, the time together. In Yahusha's name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, so I'm going to have to clarify my words a little better between Stan and stand. I just, you didn't have to stand. I was calling on Stan. Sorry. <laughs> Please have a seat. I'll call, maybe I, can I call you Stanley then? Is that okay? No? All right. So um, something I wanted to share, uh, it was from the study we did this week, the Testament of Asher. Asher, one of the 12 patriarchs of Jacob, 12 tribes of Jacob. And I want to read a couple of verses, and I think it goes hand in hand with what's before us today. We have two choices. So I'm going to read Asher. A copy of the Testament of Asher, the things he spoke to his sons in the 125th year of his life. While he was still healthy, he said to them, listen, children of Asher, to your father, and I will show you everything that is right in the sight of Elohim. Listen to this. Elohim has granted two ways to the sons of men, not 20, not 100, but two ways. Two mindsets, two lines of action, two models, and two goals. Accordingly, everything is in pairs, the one over against the other. The two ways are good and evil. Concerning them are two dispositions within our heart that choose between them. And I find it interesting because... We find ourselves in a time right now where there is a choice. This next 24, 36, 48 hours, almost the entire world is making a choice to walk in a certain way. And I'm excited there's a group of people that are saying, no, thank you. Because I read the same scriptures you do, and I read Jeremiah 10, and I've seen people go in circles reading that, but I read it for what it is. Someone goes into the forest, cuts a tree, brings it in, decks it with gold and silver. What are they talking about? Seriously, what are they talking about? There's nothing new under the sun. But let's talk about the two ways because we have a choice with everything. Go to Deuteronomy 30 real quick. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 says this. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil, and that I command you this day to love Yahweh your Elohim, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And Yahweh your Elohim shall bless you in the land where you go to possess it. But if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, 
but shall be drawn away and worship other Elohim and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish, and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land where you go over to the Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love Yahweh your Elohim, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cleave unto him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land which Yahweh swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Yitzchak, to Jacob, to give them. So we have a choice. There's one path that leads to life, and our Heavenly Father laid it out in the Scriptures for us. You want to live? Walk in these ways. The, the paths of death, there are many paths, and they're broad. So we ha people are making a choice all around the world today, this next 24, 48 hours, to either walk in His ways to come out, or to come out of His ways and to walk in the Most High's ways. Let's take a look at, um, actually here, let's take a look at Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. Verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other Elohim, which you have not known. I think it's pretty much common knowledge at this point that the winter solstice, the pagan festival that's going to be celebrated broadly uh, over the next 36 hours, stemmed from a pagan holiday serving other Elohim, even if that's what people don't intend to, that's what they're doing inherently. And my, let, let's pray now real quickly because our job here, we're not, is anybody here our judge? Is anybody going to be judging over people, right? So we have one judge. And let's pray real quick for those who are lost, lost to either the traditions, the vain traditions they've inherited or because they're being led by blind pastors or they just haven't heard the truth yet, let's pray for them right now. Father Yah, we just come before you in your blessed Son's name, Yahushua HaMashiach, whom we love. Father, we just thank you for drawing us unto him, for pulling us out of the world, Father, for coming out of mystery Babylon's ways, her perditious ways. Father, we want to pray for the lost. We want to pray for your sheep who are just blinded right now, who have not heard the truth. Father, we just ask that you'd touch every one of us here in this room, and anyone that may be listening online or in the four corners abroad that are calling upon your name and walking in your commandments and have come out of the pagan ways, Father, help us to be a light. We don't want to sit here and condemn, but we want to draw them. We want to be fishers of men. We want to fish them out of the sea of lies and deceit and the vain traditions of men that you hate. Help us. Help us, O oh Yah to be a light to our family, our friends, our loved ones, our co-workers, our acquaintances. Help us to share the love of Messiah, Husha, and of your truth, which is life. Father, help us. We just ask that you would put divine appointments in our lives, each and every one of us, that whatever we may do, that we may come across someone who's searching, Father. We know that every soul is precious. Help us to be fishers of men, to be, to revive the tribes of Jacob, back to your service, O oh, yeah. And we ask this in Messiah Yahushua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's go to Deuteronomy 11, 18. 11, 18. 11, 18 says this. Therefore shall you lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. We see this in Deuteronomy 6. We see this according to the Passover. We see this in Ezekiel 9, that when we walk in his ways, he marks us, period. It's a sign between him and us. So here's the Most High who sees everything. He sits above the circle of the earth, as it says in Isaiah 40. And he sees all men and women, their goings and what they're doing and the ponderings of their heart and the path of their feet. 
So he's seeing everyone who's making these decisions to walk in the ways of men. He's also seeing people who are coming out of this, suffering persecution, being ridiculed and pushed away from their family because of a refusal to participate in these vain ways. Revelation 13, 16. Let's go there real quick. You all should know this one by heart by now. Revelation 13, 16 says this, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. We just got done reading that those that obey his commandments, that walk in his ways, shall have a mark on their hand and their foreheads. A coincidence? Probably not. This goes right back to what I was saying at the beginning. In the book of Asher, the Testament of Asher, Yah has granted two ways. Two ways, that's it, of life or death. I want to read a passage for you from the Psalms of Solomon. These were included in the Apocrypha of the Greek Septuagint. I like to read the one for you real quick. It's chapter, it's, it's Psalm of Solomon 15. It says this. He that, uh, let's see, the flame of fire and the wrath against the unrighteous shall not touch him. When it goes forth from the face of Yahweh against sinners to destroy all the substance of sinners. Listen to this. For the mark of Elohim is upon the righteous that they may be saved. Famine and sword and pestilence shall be far from the righteous, for they shall flee away from the pious as men pursued in war. But they shall pursue the sinners and overtake them, and they that do lawlessness shall not escape the judgment of Elohim. As by enemies experienced in war shall they be overtaken. For the mark of destruction is upon their forehead, and the inheritance of sinners is destruction and darkness, and their iniquities shall pursue them unto Sheol beneath. So, here in this psalm, we see two marks, a mark of Yah and a mark of lawlessness. And I believe that's the exact same thing that the Testament of Asher was telling us. There's two ways of life and death. The path of life is narrow, and there's one way. The path of death is has many roads, many different religions. Because here's the thing. It doesn't matter if someone's in Catholicism or Buddhism, they're deceived. Or atheists, they're deceived. But praise be to Yah, He's waking up a generation to come back to His ways. Hallelujah. Let's go to, um, let's see, where do I want to go? Let's go to, let's go to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. So here's what we've chosen. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts of Yahuwah, not the feasts of the Jews, the feasts of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. So, while some of us thought we were giving up something precious by no longer celebrating the winter solstice and pagan holidays, we've gained so much more, have we not? Anybody, anybody remember Sukkot or Pesach and how much fun that was? We lost nothing. We gained so much. And this may seem like small things, but they're huge. Because here's the thing, Yah's looking down, and he's like, who's walking in my ways, and who's walking in the ways of men? Because he said it in Matthew 15, in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Anybody here want to worship him in vain? No. Elohim forbid. All right, last chapter we're going to read. Go to Ezekiel 20, and we'll see that there's nothing new under the sun.
Shabbat Shalom. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel 20. We'll read this and we'll, uh, we'll get to some amazing worship. Glad to have the Mitchells back. Hallelujah. All right, Ezekiel 20. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Yashorel came to inquire of Yahuwah and sat before me. Then came the word of Yahuwah unto me, saying, so who came to Ezekiel? Yahusha, the word. Son of Adam, speak unto the elders of Yashorel and say unto them, Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, says Adonai Yahuwah, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of Adam? Will you judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. And say unto them, Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, In the day when I chose Yashorel, and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Mitzrayim, and when I lifted my hand unto them, saying, I am Yahuwah Lohaikim, in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Mitzrayim unto a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of the Mitzrayim. And I'm here to tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. People are still worshiping these Elohim of the Mitzrayim in the abominations of their fathers. In Revelation 18, it says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. And I'm thankful to be around people here and online who have chosen to do that, even in the face of persecution. You know, Paul says in Colossians, uh, was it 2, 16 through 17, Let nobody judge you, therefore, in meat and drink and uh, festival and new moon, these kind of things. And it's interesting because I believe it's being preached one way to be like, don't let anybody judge you. If you don't want to do the new moon, if you don't want to do the Sabbath, don't let them judge you because it ain't no big deal. That's not what it's saying at all. It's people that are coming out of the pagan ways who are being judged for. Anybody, anybody here be ju- has been judged for coming out of the pagan ways of the world? Anybody, any, you know, uh, suffering some separation in their family because of it? He's saying, don't let anybody judge you for keeping the Passover, for eating clean. Because these are the things people mock, like, oh, you know, is the blood of Messiah not enough? You know, I can't have my bacon. Don't take my bacon from me, right? Don't let anybody judge you that you've decided to come out of the, the ways of the world and you started to celebrate the ways of the Most High, which is craziness to the world, is it not? What do you all become, Jews? We just got done reading Leviticus 23 that it's not Jewish feast days, it's Yah's feast days. Don't let anybody judge you for doing the right thing. Back to Ezekiel 20, verse 7. So he said, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Mitzrayim. I am Yahweh Lahaikam. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Mitzrayim. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Mitzrayim, which I just have a, I have a funny feeling that America may be in times Egypt. I don't know. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I had made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Mitzrayim and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man shall do, he shall even live in them. Paul quoted that. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahweh that sanctify them. And that word Sabbath is plural. It's not talking about just his weekly Sabbath. This is talking about his feast days. This is talking about his appointed times. This is how he knows who's his. He's like branding us. Okay, you're mine. Next. You're mine. Next. No, no. Okay. Verse 12. Moreover, oh, sorry, verse, I'm sorry. Verse 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. 
Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I have given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments, and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nothing new. Nothing new. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their, the, their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your father, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. And it's nothing new. I'm sure that golden calf looked nice and pretty and shiny, didn't it? It probably sparkled. And they were like, wow. Well, I wonder what's in, what, 80, 90% of homes today, sparkling and looking like jewels and all kinds of colors and all sorts of things. Nothing new. Verse 19, I am Yahweh Walk in my statutes and guard my judgments and do them and hallow my, my Sabbaths and they shall be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am Yahweh Elohim. Notwithstanding, the children of Israel rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither guarded my judgment to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted my hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries, because they had not executed my judgments, but has despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father, father's idols. And that's what's going on today. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were, that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, that they caused to pass through the fire all that opens the womb, that I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am Yahuwah. Therefore, son of Adam, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me and that they have committed a transgression against me. For when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their, their sacrifices, and, their, and they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said to them, What is this high place wherein you go to? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. It's also interesting in Ezekiel 16. He says these high places are on every street corner, waiting for passerbys to come in and to multiply whoredoms. I wonder what that looks like today. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says Adonai Yahuwah, are you polluted after the manner of your fathers and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when you offer your gifts, when you make your sons to pass through the fire, you pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of you, O house of Yashrael? As I live, says Adonai Yahuwah, I will not be inquired by you. It even says in Proverbs, he who does not hear the law, his prayer is even an abomination unto the Most High. And that which comes into your mind shall not be at all that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. And listen to this. This is going to be a day here in the future. As I live, says Adonai Yahuwah, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness in the land of Mitzrayim, so will I plead with you, says Adonai Yahuwah, nothing new under the sun. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge, you, purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Listen to this. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Yashorel, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. So listen to this. He's going to bring a big group of people out, and he's gonna, they're going to pass under the rod. That's what? That's a separating the flocks kind of language, right? He see which one is branded his and which one's not. The ones that are branded his are going in. The ones that are not are going to be outside, and they're going to be saying, let us in. Open unto us. We, we prophesied in your name, and in your name cast out devils, and in your name did many wonderful works. And then what's he going to say? 
Never knew you. How do we know that we know him? First John, easy as one, two, three. First John, two, three. And herein is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. That's right. Nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. So praise be to Yah, he's woken you up. Praise be to Yah that you know him. In, in Jeremiah 9, he says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glories go, glory in this, that he knows and understands me. That he is Yahuwah, full of mercy and compassion, long-suffering. He's been long-suffering with all of us here while we were doing, scurrying about whatever we were doing in our previous lives. But somehow he had mercy on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may he help us to be that shining light, not to judge these people, but to have mercy on them and say, you know what? They're just doing what their fathers have taught them and their fathers, fathers, fathers taught them. But let us be that light that shows them the better way, the ancient path. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's stand, please. Now let's stand. Let's stand. All right, girls, come here. We're going to dance. Are you going to dance with me? All right. We're going we're gonna to do the, the loudest hallelujah we've got possible inside of us. Are we going to wake up the baby? Is he okay? All right. Is he going to handle this? Okay. All right. On three, the loudest hallelujah we have on three. One, two, three. Hallelujah! All right. We're glad to have the Mitchells back. Praise Yah. Left and right ministry. And, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So the, I was originally going to sing uh, the song of creation, but ex what he was talking about was what I've written in the new song that I wrote called The Day of Yahuwah. And so uh, some of these, some of the songs that Yah puts on my hearts, are, uh, heart, is like worshipful, very worshipful, very like, you know, all praise and glory be to Yah. And then some of them are just scripture that is being sung, and it's very historical, but it's also very powerful, spiritual. I'm not saying my own song is powerful. I'm just saying that it's, it's a different type of song. It's not the same kind of worship song you're going to sing at a church on Sunday, just so you're clear, just so we're aware. So this song is called The Day of Yahuwah, and it's not something that we sit here and, and we think, you know, woo, yeah. It's, it's more like, wow, Yah is going to do something mighty and great and powerful and wonderful. And so we, we will we'll proclaim Blow a shofar in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the peoples of the land tremble for the day of Yahuwah is coming and surely it is near. Let's proclaim this together. Let's wake up the earth. Let's wake up the world and show them Yah is coming. Blow a shofar in Zion. Sound an alarm on my mountain. The peoples of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh is coming. Surely it is near. Surely it is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of thick clouds and darkness. As the dawn is Never been anything like it, nor will there be again. After it and for the many years and generations to come, the glow is so far tired. Sound an alarm on my lonely mountain. Let all the peoples of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh.
a desolate wilderness where nothing can escape. But behind is a desolate wilderness where nothing can escape. Blow a shofar in Zion, oh, and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the peoples of the land tremble. That song was very key in what, what Adam was saying. The day of Yahuwah is near. So here's another song that is just about that same message. Prepare the way, all his people. Make straight a path, for Yeshua is coming back. Surely he's coming soon. Amen? Amen. So we lift up as one mighty voice. Hosanna, hallelujah. Hosanna, hallelujah. Hosanna means my deliverer, my savior. Save us. Hallelujah says, praise Yahuwah. Our Savior is here, right? Amen.
was coming back, so he lifts up as a mighty voice. Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah. Oh, for he's coming in the clouds with his glory renowned. Make a path for him, and he'll be shining like the sun with the sword on his tongue. got a baby in her arms. Yeah, she's been Can raise the dead back to life. 
then surely in all things Yahweh provides. Yes, He provides. We rely on you, Yahuwah. This next song I, I played um, last week, if you were here last week, or if you watched online. Um, this song, I think, is vital um, to us who are in the truth and in the walk. I think it's vital to anybody, because what the main message is, if it wasn't for Yeshua, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be in the truth. You wouldn't know anything. We would be dead in our sin and our trespasses. But the merciful Savior, oh, and the Father above, Yahuwah, our merciful Father, how awesome is his love that he sent his one and only Son to save us from our sin. And without that salvation, we would never know eternal life. We would never know what it means to have hope, to have a resurrection with him. The deep gratitude we have for him and his son and Yeshua should be overflowing. So let's let's show our gratitude to Yeshua by proclaiming, if it wasn't for you, Yeshua, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't understand. We'd never know the way, the truth, the life. We'd never know it.
to bring back the fold and make us whole again, oh yeah. By the blood of your Son, we've been grafted in. Oh merciful yeah. How awesome is your love. Oh, merciful, yeah. Your son laid down his life to redeem this broken bride. And oh, the deep gratitude we have for your son who gathers the weary and broken and shows them all your love how lovely is the groom who calls for his sons and daughters oh, yeah. we offer up our lives like sheep on the altar Your son laid down his life to redeem this broken bride. And if not for you. Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed one, the one who came to this earth in perfection, walking out the way in glory and in truth. He showed us what it looks like to be perfect, to be holy, to be set apart, to walk perfectly in the commands of Yah. And he laid down his life so freely for us. May we lay down our lives freely for you, Yeshua. May we give up ourselves and lay down our selfish desires, our comforts, the things we desire more than you, Father, our idols. These are idols. May we lay them down and declare, if it wasn't for you, Yeshua, Hamashiach, I would never know grace. I would never know truth. I would never know life. Let us humble ourselves before you give our lives to you. 
Let's proclaim a merciful Yah. Oh, merciful Yah. How awesome is your love. Oh, merciful Yah. Your son laid down his life. Your son. Your son laid down his life. Oh, your son laid down his life to redeem this broken Jake and the rest of the B team, we're gonna do a last minute song. The kitchen needs five more minutes, so we're gonna we're gonna do light shine. Walking in spirit. 
Kitchen, are we ready? Oh, okay, perfect timing. All right, let's pray over the food. Benaya, you want to come over here and pray for the food? Pray over the food. I heard something about B team, but it sounded pretty good to me. <laughs> Just Bravo team. Oh, Bravo. All right, all right that'll work. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, y'all, just thank you so much for this fellowship. Thank you for the family that we have. Just want to thank you for this building that has kept so many families out of the cold and out of the extremes that uh, we're experiencing right now. And just thank you. And we pray that you pour a blessing out on those that could make it here today and just fellowship with others. And pray for the hands that uh, prepared this food. We ask these things in your son's precious name, Yahushua. Amen. Amen.